All right, we got uh, Glenn Howerton. Glenn with two N's in the building. Uh, I'm here. Were, were we just recording that other part or no? No, 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 no. All good stuff. Yeah, it was. It was. So uh, we we That's just, we, we saved the best stuff for for the not interview. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give everyone you, else the beast. You got in last night, uh, meaning that you were not able to watch Game of Thrones. Yeah. But like most couples in the world, and most anybody in the world, everyone's watching it. So mm-hmm. you run into the issue of can your significant other watch without you? Yeah, it's what was the, the verdict? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know what she did because I had to. I had to go to bed early. You know, I'm in New York. She's in L.A. Uh, and uh, I don't know what she decided. I mean, I told her how I felt. You know, this is, this is kind of the way I think is, is brave of you. Like, like you, could, you could argue that this <laughs> is a very crazy? that this is like a like a healthy you know a healthy relationship. I said this is how I feel, but I can't stop you from taking whatever action you decide to take. You know what I mean? And I'll understand, but I might be a little upset. You know, sort of like, yeah. I'll tell you how I feel, but I can't control you type, mm-hmm. type right, of a thing. Right. You know, it's actually very healthy. What's, what's funny, um, I think, is the, 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 you know, if it's a wife to a husband versus a husband to a wife, I think is a very different game. Well, can I tell you, this, this is what I told her. This is what I said. I said, I said, I would rather you wait because I would rather experience the thrills and the chills together for the first time. And she goes, I get that, I get that. It's going to be really hard to wait, and people are going to be talking about it. And I said, no, I know, I understand. I understand, and I get that. I said, let me ask you. How would you feel if the tables were turned, and you were out of town, and I watched it without you? She was like, I wouldn't like that. And I was like, well, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> yeah. you know, so um, I, I, I'm going to guess that she didn't watch it. Uh, but that's love, man. That's seriously, that's love. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the when you think, I you think that maybe she watched it in July. Well, that's what she I wouldn't do that. That's what I did. That I did that for the entirety of the um, Sons of Anarchy, Sons of Anarchy show okay. with my <laughs> that's like eight or nine seasons with, with my with my roommate who it was a, it was a non sexual relationship. It was me and my buddy, but we would watch every night. We'd watch three episodes, yeah, and then he had a real job, so we'd have to go to work early in the morning. So he'd go to bed. <laughs> And I would stay up until like two in the morning watching Morrison's of Anarchy. Yeah. And then back? the next night I would watch those episodes watch again. again. <laughs> and I was scared to tell him that I'd been watching. So I would watch. His, I watched his, everything every Sons of Anarchy episode like three times. His, his true love <laughs> and yours is just socially awkward and and weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I do think I, I think that like the I, I'd say I mean Game of Thrones warrants watching more than once. So yeah. you know I wouldn't even mind it that much if she did. But it's like I knew that I know that this week's episode was. Supposed supposed to be like 85 minutes of mm. just mayhem mm-hmm. um so i knew it was going to be like a big sort of big I don't deal know. yeah 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 so i i have no did idea you did you guys did you guys watch? no yeah, no no because no. because it's interesting the spoil spoiler culture is weird uh LaShawn McCoy, a football player, spoiled Avengers for everyone. And, I mean, I think there are people who would actually murder him in cold blood if they could. <laughs> yeah. Last night, one minute after Game of Thrones is over Spoilers galore. Everyone, like, yeah. You, I, don't, you, I don't know what the rules are anymore. Twitter. People are saying exactly what happened and who did who to what. And uh, but you know, if it was a movie, end of the world. Game of Thrones, not so much. Yeah, I'm pretty good about staying away from it. I yeah. mean, I'll, I'll be on Twitter, but I mean, if I see anything, if I see even the name or any hint of it, I just boop, I go right past it. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. How about your boys making a cameo? Uh, Rob was uh, got an arrow through the eye a couple episodes. That was yeah. a cool moment. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was that was cool. I I, I barely noticed it. Uh, yeah, I, no, we saw it real time. <laughs> well, so here's what I heard. So um, we're friends with the the, the creators uh, of the show, and um, they wrote and I, one of my favorite Sunny episodes, Flow, yeah, Flowers for Charlie. Yeah, yeah, I'm those incredible. guys are great. Uh, and and I actually went to college with another one of the producer writers, um, Brian Cogman, and actually. Um, so Cogman was just an actor. He wasn't even a writer prior to Game of Thrones. He became an actor. I mean, that's a whole other story. You guys should have Cogman in here and talk mm. to him about how he became a writer on Game of Thrones sure. because it's crazy. <laughs> it, I'll, I'll, the, the brief summary is that his wife was David uh, Benioff's nanny, and that's how he kind of got to know them. And then and, and around the first season of the show, he it, it's a whole. I, I won't tell you the story because it's a great story. But anyway, uh, so Cogman was at the house, was at our house uh, last weekend because he wrote the second episode and so he and he invited a bunch of his friends yeah, right. and um and we sat and watched it at, at at our house why did i bring this up what did you just ask you said um, um rob made his cameo oh, oh and, yeah, yeah 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 um so he told me while we were at the house he said that uh he and martin Starr, who was also in the episode um they actually had a whole scene uh together in the episode pr- that led up to them getting killed 
and they had to cut the scene because it. I, I think I don't know if they. I don't think they cut it for time. I think it just didn't make sense. Got or it. so it he just, had a little more. A little there was more a little shine. bit more. Yeah, yeah there was. A That's got to be a tough cut where you're. You're like, look, these are two bona fide stars who are. I guess you know they're doing a bit role and whatnot, and that, that's, that's got to be a hard thing yeah, to. Yeah, I mean they were gassed if, up about it. If it's it, regular, and, regular yeah, extras, it's probably pretty easy to be like whatever. You know, yeah, the yeah. Are, they come, came all the way out to Ireland, you know, <laughs> yeah. or wherever the hell it was. And, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I think uh, you know. I, I don't know. I mean, for me, I, I could also see it, them looking at it and going, you know what, this is a great scene because I mean, they're good actors. I'm sure it was funny, but. It, it's just it would be distracting. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah, like, it takes no, away from it a little the bit. The guy from Sunny and the guy yeah. from uh, you know Silicon Valley or whatever. Like I don't know. My, so maybe that's why they cut. It. They went. Ah, this is just gonna. Yeah, we're gonna get hammered for this. It's right. Like it's serious. not the right time to do a little like maybe you know yeah. bit. Yeah, I can see that. What What's the coolest opportunity you've kind of had through either Sunny or just fame in general? Like Rob had for that for for getting it on a, on a big show like that. Uh, I feel like everything I've done, I've had to push so hard to to just get uh, to be a part of anything. I don't know what it, it's like. It doesn't train. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like Sunny is one of those weird shows where it's it's like there's two different conversations. It's like, you know, I, I've always joked that I could picture people who make the decisions on like awards and stuff like that all getting in a room and being like, oh, oh my god, did you guys see that episode of Sunny? So funny. I love that show. It's just a great bit. Oh yeah, it's, it's like my favorite show. Anyway, let's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about who we're going to nominate for the Emmys. This year. It's like two different conversations. No doubt. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I, I'd say uh, to answer your question, um, I mean, Fargo came yeah. out of that. Oh, right, right, um, right. Noah Hawley, the show's creator, is, was a, a, I don't know, I think he was a Sunny fan. I mean, he, he certainly acted like he was, and he, you know, so I know he's familiar with the show. Um, he must because Rob had a bit in that in season two, right? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, three. yeah, I think Noah is a, 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 a is like genuinely a fan of the show, yeah. and um, and John Langroff, who's the president of FX, um, knows that my background is actually not in comedy, mm. and uh, he, you know, he had asked me many times. He's like, "Hey, you want to come and do some stuff in a in an FX drama sometime?" I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." So that was actually a direct call from John Langroff saying, "Hey, we got this thing, and I think we're going to do Fargo," and I was like, "Ooh." That I at first I was like because that's one of my favorite movies of all time. I was like that that might be a bad idea. Like really turn this yeah Fargo. I mean turning that into a series. I thought that was oh bad. just the whole idea in general. I think yeah. you appearing on it, but you just mean no it being a TV no show was, no it was being a TV show. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly. But he kind of explained it to me. Told me who Noah was and um and 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 uh, and I actually read a couple of Noah's books. Um, and, um, and they sent me the first script and it was like the best script I've ever yeah. read. I mean, Noah's scripts were so good that the show was almost a letdown because that's how good the scripts were. Wow. Really? I mean, the show is amazing. That's yeah. next level. That's not book was better than movie. That script was, was better, better than, than the show. show. I know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, but that, that came, that came out of Sunny and that was, that was a blast. I mean, I had so much fun doing that show. You mentioned how your background's not in comedy. Do you, do you ever get frustrating if you, people like just think of you as like a funny guy and you're like, look, I'm Juilliard. I'm. <laughs> I'm like king shit here. King I'm shit. not just the funny guy. Well, first of all, I never, I don't think of myself as king shit, um, <laughs> but it's, it, but it's totally fine for other people. To think. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think for a while I, I found it a little frustrating. I, I sort of learned to embrace it. Um, you know, and also I, I think I learned to come to terms with something that I think has always been true, which is that I've always just gravitated toward comedy, whether mm -hmm. I, I never want, I don't think I ever quite realized it or wanted to admit it, but even when I was doing uh, dramas, I was always making jokes, and I was yeah. always I was always finding what if, everything I see, uh, I see the humor in it, I see the satire in it, and mm -hmm. my brain has just always worked that way since I was a kid. So it just was inevitable. When, when you say like admit it, though, is like, in your mind and I guess in other actors' minds, is that considered lesser than? Like oh know, no 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 I just to think, me comedy is like the end all be all and it's oh like, yeah I would I would be more proud to be a, a funny guy than a, a, a yeah, drama I guy I think that's I think that's fair to ask it because it it almost does make it seem as though that's what I'm saying or that's what we're talking about um I think maybe when you think of uh pr like what's considered prestigious yeah. Right. Um, you know, generally speaking, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the dramas. It's, right. the, well, it's the same conversation you just had about Sonny, where it's just like, for whatever reason, they yeah. seem separate. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, so I think in that regard, um, it's, you know, I guess it, it could be perceived by some as like, quote unquote, lesser than, but I mean, I think most people appreciate comedy and I think people 
you could you could make a strong argument that somebody who's really good at 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 acting in comedy is would also make a good dramatic actor because right. you know it's almost like i mean the to me the best comedic performers are the ones that are acting it in a very taking you know playing real objectives like like an actor does that 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 they're they're coming from a place of of real need for the character and that's where the comedy comes from and um but uh yeah, I mean, but I would like to do more drama, and I and I and I will in the future. I think it's going to be a little bit of an uphill climb because, you know, you, you're so goddamn funny. Because <laughs> I'm just so damn funny. <laughs> no, I don't. I, you know, you yeah, you get pigeonholed a little bit, which I yeah. get. I get. I've done it as a producer. I've seen. I've 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 been pitched people things, and I'm like, oh, that guy's not funny. And then I catch myself doing. It. I'm like, wow, I don't know that. Mm-hmm. What the fuck do I know if this guy's funny or not? <laughs> just because right. he's done a bunch of drama sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. What no. What's a role uh, a drama role out there right now that you think you would have crushed? Uh, you would have liked to have. <clears throat> um, Film or TV. Uh, I, you know, I don't think that way. I, I think the, you know, I, I, I think when I was, when I was, when I first moved out to Hollywood and started acting consistently, I felt like I saw more actors in my, that, that were maybe my contemporaries or my, my, the people I would be competing for roles against and, and thought like, ah, oh, that guy's not that good. Why is this guy working all the time? But I, most of the time, especially these days, I don't find that to be the case. You know, I, I, I find that like a lot of my contemporaries, like the guys that are are, are really like sort of big stars or or, or really well respected um, actors who work all the time that are my age and would be maybe playing the roles that I would be playing if mm. if I could get them, um, are all really really good. They're really great yeah. at what they do. So I so yeah, you know, I get a little frustrated if I see somebody who's not that good. But not if they, like not if they do. Give me a name. Yeah. Give me a name. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tempting. Uh, no, like, but, but, but even, but, but I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about like somebody who I would see in something and they, and it's like once or twice. Cause then it's like, well, yeah, they got the part. They gave it a shot. They weren't that good. And they right. didn't work that much afterwards cause they just weren't that good. Right. Whatever. Uh, but, um, you know, it's it's rare that somebody just gets shot after shot after shot after shot after if they're shot not, if they're not they didn't that prove good. It, yeah. Yeah. Did I read, uh, did I hear correctly that you were maybe in the running to be Star-Lord in the yeah. Avengers? Yeah, I didn't that find that. That would have been a nice one. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's funny. I, 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 I do think about that. Um, you know, I I've, I saw Chris Pratt in the waiting room um, at that audition, actually, as I was walking out. Um, I didn't feel that good about the audition. I, I guess, I know James Gunn, uh, called me in because he's a Sonny fan and um you know and he wanted the the role to be I think you know he wanted it to be cheeky and and funny and um you know so in that sense it made it, like it, it made sense for, for me to maybe play that role and but I didn't feel that great about the audition I I felt okay about it but I walked out I saw Chris Pratt and I was like oh that guy's perfect for this I really did <laughs> and, um and when he got it I was like yeah I kind of I kind of called that and I and I thought he was so so great in it but um yeah, it's one of those things where, like, I would never say, obviously, like, if I'd gotten that part, I would have been so excited and I would have done it. But, you know, I think about the other side of it. You know, I've got I've got a wife and I've got two kids. And, you know, when you when you hit that level and you're and you, 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 you know, I, I love the idea of, of starring in movies because as an actor, you get to just play a wide variety of roles. And if you're in demand, you get to decide what you want to do. You know what I mean? And getting, mm-hmm. getting to get sent a bunch of scripts and go, do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? I mean, that's, that's the dream because you, you get to express yourself in so many different ways. But the downside to it is all that travel. I mean, you're traveling all around the world constantly. You're promoting and you're promoting. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean, we've had. Enjoy. We've had a few of the parks and rec people in here and they said they have like a group chat and, and Chris Pratt's still in it. And they're always trying to get together. And a lot of them do get together very often. And Chris is always replying like, can't I'm in Japan. Can't yeah. I'm here. And he's like, I'll be home in twenty I'll be home for like twenty two hours in LA. If anyone can meet up with me then, that's great. Yeah. But he's, he's you. very, you know, very, very rarely around. That yeah, that becomes your family. Exactly. That's that 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 part of it seems that part of it seems tough. I'm not sure how how I would handle something like that. I mean, I, I think people just think of all the all the glitz and the glamour and the fame and the money and all this kind of stuff and it's great, but it's just so much coming at you. Yeah. Um I would yeah. imagine that's also a difficult you're talking about how it's you know, shedding kind of the comedy. But I imagine shredding shedding the superhero image would be tough too to go to Probably. a real drama from that. Yeah, well, well, I mean, the movie business is it's all like indie films and superhero movies, so right, it's right. kind of one or the other. So I, I don't know. Wild, right? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I feel I feel really fortunate to be in the position that I'm in. I mean, I, I I really 
just I, I'm so proud of what we did on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and what we're continuing to do. And um, and then falling into this this AP Bio gig That's was great. just like I mean it was I don't know. it's a perfect like transition in a way because it's like similar and you still get like your fans still kind of get what they expect, but it's a whole new character for you. And yeah. in this season, so season two is cooking right now. And uh, your character believes he has come up with the recipe, the formula for happiness. <laughs> yeah. Four things here, which <laughs> this is very apropos for us on this podcast to try to figure out how to be happy. <laughs> so the four things, one, uh, do a physical job so that you can see, you know, the results, the fruit of your labor. Yeah. Two, uh, mundane celebrations to help distract you from death. <laughs> <laughs> Three, eat sugary, fatty, and salty things. Yeah. And to find someone within a 20-mile radius of you to procreate so that your legacy lives on. <laughs> That's it, guys. I don't know what's so fucking hard. Just, just do the four things. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I certainly have had friends who, um, you know, life is so simple to them. It's just like, you know, go to work and hopefully you do a job that you enjoy and you know, I got a buddy who's a horticulturist and he's a, you know, he just grows plants and he loves it. Mm -hmm. He loves plants. And <laughs> as the card says that you just read, uh, he gets to enjoy the the fruits, the, you know, yeah. the, the results of his, of his labor as he watches his beautiful plants grow. And then he's got two kids and he goes fishing and he, you know, life's pretty, life's pretty simple, you know. Uh, it's it's those of us out there that are super ambitious that are unhappy. Fucking ambition. Yeah. Yeah. He, he kind of reminds me of uh, such a bitch. Like you just saying when he likes to go fishing. He kind of reminds me of the guy from Office Space. Yes. Where it's like, what would you do if you had a million dollars? Like two chicks at the same time. <laughs> like, really doesn't have yeah. many aspirations <laughs> bigger than that. Right. Like, yep. The well, are those your four as well? Like what are Glenn Howerton's for? Not Jack's. Um, I mean, I'm I'm um I tend to be sort of somewhat unsatisfied, which I think in a good way is, is, and, and the good way of looking at it is that it, you know, it keeps the fire in the belly and it, mm. it, it keeps me creative and it keeps me like trying new things. But the, the downside to it is that it's true. If you're not careful, uh, nothing's ever enough, you know? And I think, I think that really is the key to unhappiness is that, is that you think that once you hit a certain level or you make a certain amount of money, that then you're going to be happy, and I think when a lot of people get to that place, they actually their dreams actually do come true. Let's say, let's take a movie star for instance. You know, they're like I'm a movie star, I did it, and I'm making all this money, and I'm in all these movies, and I get all this adulation, and and then and then they're like, oh, but I'm still not happy. What the mm -hmm. fuck is going on here? Like it's not, it's not, it's not enough. And so, you know, so then you try to get more, but there is no more. That's sort it's of it. It's not a thing that more fixes. It's not a know? thing that more fixes. You need something yeah. different, not just more of what you have, even if what you have seems great. Yeah. Yeah. And I so I, I think um to a certain degree, you know, that 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 could be the key to happiness. It's funny because that that that's the that's the thing I love about Jack is that he can he can discover that through studying the people of the town of Toledo and go, this this seems to be the key to happiness because I'm surrounded by all these losers right. who seem to we're be so much, happy. we're so much yeah. happier than me and yes. I'm a winner and I'm not happy. <laughs> it's like, what the hell's going on? So he knows that and yet at the same time, I mean, that's the, that's sort of the, the, uh, the key, uh, I guess, uh, tension in, in the episode is a man who knows what's going to make him happy and yet can't give into it. Right. I, I think, I think the key to happiness, and this is a blunt way to put it, is stupidity. It's true. I think if ignorance is bliss, man. To to yeah. not to not know like how much else is out there, or to not know how much else you could possibly have, or to not know how much you don't have. I think that's the key. Yeah, I think I, I, like even when it comes to like um, like you said, like, like like someone who's just a blue collar person. Not not to say that blue collar people are stupid, but just that you're you're just like this is fine. Mm -hmm. This is enough, and, and that's I think that's a stupid belief. So therefore, stupidity yeah, I, would be the key. <laughs> I think that's that's certainly one way to. To, to do it or I mean I, and I think some people are just sort of born uh, more able to sort of live in the present I mean my buddy who I was yeah. just talking about he's the kind of guy you know he's my age he's he's in his early 40s and um, you know he's been drinking beer like we have since our teens and yet you know he'll sit down and have a really good beer and he'll just sit there and he'll take a sip of it and be like man that's a good beer <laughs> <laughs> perfect in the that's moment, a good right? fucking beer you know what I mean like you know, whereas like you're like funnel that shit, <laughs> get it in you. You know, you're, or you're like drinking it and you're going, ah, this beer's all right, but there's probably a better one because there's this, this, you know, there's sixty taps, man. I'm at I'm at a beer place. I got to try every single one. He's sitting down, he's sipping it, and he's going, that's a good beer, man. Yeah, that's some good. like that's fucking some deep. Just, I love that. Yeah, I, I wish some, I was like some that. Some people sit I at the bar that. and they just want a Bud Light, and some people want to go to the the micro brew with the sixty taps. That's yeah, just, and they uh, can't. They're, they're just you're, yeah. you're all drinking, but one person's happy and one person's like scanning the menu. 
you like, oh, well, I need I need to find the best one. I got to find the best. Thought. I got to find the perfect beer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Life is all about finding the perfect beer. Yeah. Speaking of the perfect beer or something, I guess <laughs> you had your list <laughs> of the things you can't live without. <laughs> oh my god. It, wait, say what? Your list of the things you can't live without. I had this? Yes. I think it was in Strategist, some of the New York Times, maybe. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I Glenn. know what you're talking about. Yeah. It was I the mean, worst list I've ever seen in my life. It was life. the worst. Yeah. Glenn, yeah, yeah. it was just. Okay, okay, no, no, you no. You had two a... different kinds of crackers on there. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they, and, and they were, none of them were good crackers. They weren't even Ritz crackers, sir. <laughs> oh, they were... my God. That's so fucking funny. I love it. Was, that. It was New I York Magazine. That. Can I tell you something? Okay, so, so after I did that, after I did that, I. I took a step back and I went, what did I just do? <laughs> what did I just do? Because on the one hand, you know, it was sort of a, a, a weirdly honest portrayal of, of the things that I like. And on the second hand, like I looked at it and I was like, this is going to be, so, this is going to look so lame. <laughs> but then I was if, like, oh, fuck it. Who cares? But then I don't know. But let's talk about like this. What no. You like No, 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 but no, I mean, no. If, I if, I, if I were to be like, yo, do you know Glenn Howerton? He's the funniest dude, coolest guy. Here's what you need to know about them. They and would be like, I never want to talk to that again. It was <laughs> simple Mills almond flour crackers yeah. with fine ground sea salt was the one uh, was the one cracker. Yeah. And the other was Siete, Siete, Siete lime Siete. grain free tortilla chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those yeah. are terrible fucking snacks. Dude. <laughs> you <laughs> you all you number three on the list. No, Sugary I, fatty. Wait, wait, wait. That's what, that's what it's all about. Hold on a second. Have you tried them? No, of course not. I <laughs> actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to judge the, the style of cracker because my favorite cracker is, uh, I think it's called the perfect chip. It's spinach and kale, so it sounds terrible to people too. Yeah. But it's a great cracker. I'm gonna, st- I'll, I'll give you that. But I mean, maybe if I had to live with something, I would, I would take one cracker. Okay, but I, no, I listen. I uh, first of all, I appreciate you guys' honesty. And I, I, I do, and uh, and you're not wrong. In a sense, you're not wrong because it's really a, a pretty lame list. I'll tell you something that I did that I actually told them. Um, was supposed to be one of my things, and they didn't put it on there. And you guys would be heckling the shit out of me if they had. <laughs> I don't think they put it on here, but one of the things that I've that I've done that has been an absolute game changer is I went to a podiatrist, and I had him mold yep. orthotics yep. to my foot. <laughs> yep, I have them. I, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so so yeah. so so how yeah. do you feel about that? that's that's a fucking sweet move? I mean, <laughs> it, when when you got fucked up feet, and then and then they like. It's like, how was I living without these things? Exactly. Like, exactly it's, you it's, yeah. the ne- it's like people do, and, and then I'll have, I'll tell people that I did that and they're like, oh yeah, I've got these Dr. Scholl's. I'm like, no, 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 no. let me stop you. <laughs> let me stop you. Did you go see Dr. Scholl? <laughs> did he fucking mold it to your foot? Cause shut, shut up about your stupid Dr. Scholl's. You're not, we're not even talking about the same thing. I'm saying a man put a mold on my foot. So my orthotic, you can't wear my orthotic. It goes to my foot. It's fucking amazing, man. It's a game changer. Um, but I can see how that would be like super lame to some people. What else is on that list? Let's let's talk about this. So, so there's the 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 almond crackers, the, the circuit skin fix it plus, which is a acne dropper, like for individual oh yeah. Well, pimples. so so yeah. I mean, you know, as somebody who's on camera, like I gotta get you know, I gotta I gotta mm-hmm. blast those zits out. I don't get them very often, but like. That thing fucking works, man. That's that cool. I, got, I, got, that I saw right, that right? and I that was, was like, not lame, right? That one's that was not lame? lame, but like, I just don't think you have them that often. Well, I don't, but right. when I do, you got to have it. Yeah, you got good yeah. skin, by the way. Thank you very much. I'll take that. <laughs> Interview <Interesting. laughs> over. I was gonna say, keep the head doesn't fit through the door as it is, man. <laughs> Coconut oil, La Turangel, Turangel, Turangel. I don't know where the hell I didn't give him that brand. That was some bullshit. <laughs> okay. All I said was, I think I Wait said, a minute. you put this on your skin. Yeah. You put it in your hair. Yeah. And you put it in your fucking coffee. Yeah. <laughs> All the same thing. Yeah. It, yeah. Holy that's the, moly! Look, so I'm that, not, I mean, that's a Swiss Army knife right there. That's pretty <laughs> co- good. Yeah, have. that's that's a good way of putting it. Coconut oil is the Swiss Army knife. You put lotion knife. in your coffee? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it moisturizes you inside and out. <laughs> Hurrah, moon lip balm. Oh, that stuff's amazing, dude. I I'm, I, I enjoy I've got some in my pocket good, right now. Yeah, I mean, if, if my if my lips are chapped, I want to just like chop my head well, off. So check this out. Myself, so. Get the Hurrah Moon Balm and put it on at night before you go to bed and you don't need lip balm the next day because okay. your lips are so fucking moist. <laughs> I I have a little theory. This I guy's think... an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot. What he's about to say is stupid. Okay, all right. I think that the only people who need lip balm are people who use lip balm. I've never used lip balm in my life and I don't think I've ever had chapped You know lips. what? I, I think there's something to that. I really do. I think it. I think there's something ah, to... Fuck. I think your body... No, no, I think you're right. I, I think it's. I think it's probably 
probably true that if you use lip balm all the time, your body goes, well, I don't need to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And so it's you're lazy. Yeah, your body gets lazy. Your, your body goes, oh, this guy's got it handled. He's yeah. got hurrah. <laughs> you know, so just, you know, what a commercial. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right, man. I, I, I got addicted to it, and I, and I think maybe I'm going to try <laughs> what you're talking hurrah. about. It's yeah. like, uh, it's the same thing. I, I stopped when I was in high school. I stopped using like face cleaner because that would like dry you out too much, and then you'd break out. When it, yeah. it like got you got a little bit of sweat, so yeah. I haven't used like any special face cleaner in forever, and and we just heard I have nice you skin. skin. So. You've got great skin. I think I'm on because you're not something. washing all the sebum off your skin. That's right. Yeah. Same, same reason what? I don't use Se- sebum. <laughs> Look it up. Guys. You also have sebum. a Vitamix blender and a uh, uh, nasal spray. Mm-hmm. And so the Vitamix a all- pair of Nike fly knit kicks. Oh, yeah, for your, just, go with your orthotics. Well, that's just well. Actually, you know what? I, with the fly knits, I don't wear the orthotics generally. Oh, wow. Um, I don't. I don't feel like I need them in those. The Vitamix. I'll fucking blend anything. <laughs> I'll blend it. I'll. I'll. I'll make a giant fucking plate of food, and if I don't have time to eat it, I'll throw it in the Vitamix, add some water, and fucking drink that shit. <laughs> Life on the go, man. I'm, I'm not a foodie. I'm a just get it in me. Yeah. Um, same way. Just, I, just I, it I eat survival. to survive. That's yeah. it. I'm never. But that's really... great. So, so, do you eat healthy? Uh, no, I should, but no, it no, doesn't here, make any sense, right? Well, no, like I should... no, here's the thing. You have an advantage that some people don't have, and mm-hmm. insofar as like you don't care that much about uh, about like the way the food tastes or whatever. Like you're not like you don't have like a super sophisticated palate, right? So, for guys like... Sound like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. I don't think it. No, no, no. It, well, it's you're not a, a little compliment. trash, baby. <laughs> uh, but the advantage to that that I found is that because I don't care... Like, I also kind of take pride in being able to eat, like, super gnarly shit because mm. I just don't care. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll just put some salt on it and be like, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> so, the advantage you have is that you can eat really gnarly, healthy shit and not fucking care. Yeah, I can't. Well, I, mean, I definitely can't. I don't. Eat Sour Patch Kids for dinner. Yeah, so, I, you know. but like that's this. This is my point, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I just need something in me. I, I I could eat anything, but I almost feel like I should just because of well, so who I, I am, which is a little trash, baby. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a little tip. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little tip, right? Because you're probably not eating enough vegetables. Probably not. Just stick them in a fucking vitamin. Blend, get a Vitamix. Yeah. Get a, get a bunch of vegetables. You know what I mean, and put some protein powder in there to make it taste good. Blend it up with some water. Just get a fucking juice, some vegetables, and just drink it. Just get it in you. That's what I should do. Just get I, it in I'll you. smash like the green Don't juices juice and stuff like that. Don't juice it because the ju- when you juice it, first of all, juices are a fucking pain in the ass to clean. Vitamix, all you do is literally stick it in. You drink the whole vegetable. You're getting the whole vegetable. <laughs> Yeah, it's right? like an infomercial right now. <laughs> Bam! You're drinking a vegetable. Bam! Twenty nine ninety nine. It's true. It's true. I didn't get I'll, any I, money for this either. I'm not getting any money for this. I should. Damn it. Uh, we want to wrap up here. We interviewed Danny uh, maybe a month ago. I'd say. I don't know. Yeah, something a little, like that. A little while for Dumbo. Ago. So, and yeah. it was for Dumbo. And How so, was that? did he make any sense? <laughs> he was, I'm serious. He was great. He was very good. Sometimes he's... he, sometimes he just he just starts talking. You're like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> just record it. No, there, he, was, he was, there was some part he where he was talking time. about like finding your feather, and he was going on. That's on. what I. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you're like, is this? Is, is this? Sometimes you know what he did when we first cast him. He would start talking, and and me and Rob and Charlie would be looking at each other. Like, is, he ta- is this is he talking in character right now? What is happening? <laughs> and we would find out there'd be time. Like he told this one story about like he was like, yeah, my grandfather kept a, a fucking a tin with teeth in it, and I was like, <laughs> the fuck is he talking about? And then and then we and then afterwards we're like, oh, he was oh he's creating his character. He's talking in character. <laughs> Yeah. Oh Jesus! Anyway, sorry. What, so we well, we, he was promoting Dumbo. Yeah. <clears throat> obviously a Disney movie, and we're not exactly too Disney friendly. But we kept it clean. Okay. And he did not. So this is actually an unaired uh, bit that we're gonna play for the first time. Yeah, asking Disney wouldn't let us air. Yeah, Disney asked us to cut <laughs> it because we asked him if there was ever a role, a a, 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 a script that Frank and uh, Danny said no to. Okay. So this was uh, his reaction. If you put really cans on. All right. It was everything we were hoping for, but Disney was in the room, and they were like, no, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> we actually had our producer texting us like during it, being like, you got to get him to stop talking God. about this. Yeah, move on from the conversation. Cause you ever said no to? I, I have. I have. There was one show that they uh, they wrote, but it wasn't like serious thing. It's like kind of like a, uh, it's a long story, but I was reading the script that they needed to do that day. We were going to start with the new thing. They threw a curveball at me. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning. We were going to go to a, a one o'clock read through of it. And I wanted to read it before I went. 
and I read it and it was scathing. It was just a most horrible. I got banged like six times. I was in jail. I got raped by a white supremacist. I, I got, you know, raped by cops. I was laying on my stomach with my ass like burning. And, 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 and they kept doing the show. They kept going back to the bar. But then they cut to me in a a different rape situation. Awful. And I said, I said, any second now, let him call my lawyer. I'm not doing this fucking thing. And then I got to the last line. And the last scene was the cop is letting me go. And he says, well, you're not going to leave without saying goodbye, are you? And he grabs me and throws me on the floor and he bangs me in front of a bunch of cops. And I'm laying here on my stomach. And I go, what the, what is, and the guy leans down into the, like it says in the script, he leans down close to Frank and he says, April fool, motherfucker. <laughs> That's a true story. What an all time move it. by you guys. He, uh, he pulled an April fool's joke on us uh, where we showed up at a hotel and uh, we were all there and he had the manager come down to tell us that we were all in the same room. <laughs> He's like, sorry, we ran out of room, so we're going to stick you guys all in the same room. We're like, the level of fucking disrespect that's happening right now from FX to fucking book us at a hotel where we're all in the same room? Assholes. So yeah, we sent, we wrote a, we, we had a, we had a script where we took, we took the entire B story out of the script and we changed it to where like Danny did something and Frank did something and he ended up going to jail and he's in jail and uh, the second he gets there, like he just gets raped by <laughs> By like, he he just he gets raped by like an like a gang basically he gets a, he gets gang raped, and then so so then the white supremacists come to him and they go look man you're a white guy you're just gonna keep getting raped in here you better join our group otherwise you're gonna get you know this is gonna keep happening so he joins the white supremacists just to survive in prison which I think is like right. a real thing that yeah, actually absolutely. does happen because we wanted it to make it seem like it was a real thing, and then of course he gets raped by all the white supremacists. <laughs> So now he's like, so, now he's, so then, so then again, and it cuts back to us, totally different storyline. He's got his own storyline. And then it cuts to the end. Yeah. And the cops, you know, he goes to, the, he goes to the prison guards and he's like, you guys got to help me, man. Everybody's raping me. They're like, there's, there's nothing I do. They're like, well, don't worry about it. You're getting out. You know, it's all good. You know? And so the cops, yeah, just like Danny said, they're like, they're like, well, you're not going to leave without saying goodbye. Are you? And, then, and then it wasn't one cop. He gets raped by all the cops. <laughs> All the fucking cops. What's unbelievable is that he was like, yeah, I, I can't believe they're, you know, like that it was real. Like that, like that I, there was no point where he was like, all right, this is a joke. He no. was like, shit, they really want me to do this. That's right. And he really That's was. He was, like, I, he was like, I got to call my lawyer. I don't I don't know. I got to say no to these guys. And they get, it's too late. We got to shoot this fucking thing. Because it was like a last minute thing. Yes. All time stuff, man. I mean, obviously everyone's excited for Sonny, but AP Bio is cooking, cooking in season two. It's a very funny show also. So check that out. Get your Vitamix blender. AP, AP Bio is, is, one of the funniest network shows I've ever seen. And that, that, that almost Absolutely. seems like a... a uh, like, like you were saying, yeah. But, it, I mean, the net, I guess it kind of it is for, for network shows. Network shows typically aren't as funny. Network well, shows just, typically get the Emmy nominations, the Modern Families and the into. Big Bang Theories. Right, right. Whereas, you know, the, the really funny shows are Always Sunny, and and now I think AP, AP Bio's up there as well. It's a little bit of a hybrid. We like to, I mean, that's how it comes off to me. It's like, yeah. it's almost like a network cable hybrid. Yeah, um, it definitely, definitely is. Yeah, but thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm i having so much fun on the show. I'm, I'm I'm very happy with it. And I, I think it really found its stride in season two. You, you and Patton have, have a great rapport. You guys yeah. friendly offset as well? Yeah. Uh, Patton's just a great guy. I mean, the whole cast is like super funny. Everybody's really, really nice. I mean, I, it's like I don't have any horror stories to tell. It's like the greatest gig ever, man. I mean, <laughs> you found your beer, dude. Yeah, you I found my beer. Found beer. <laughs> I did. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, I'm sipping on that show, and I'm like, this is delicious. And no, but like, I mean, I get to hang out with Patton Oswalt all day yeah. long, and 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 Paul Appel, like two of the funniest human beings on earth. Like, imagine sitting around talking to those fucking guys. It's like getting, like, I'm going to school every day. It's great. Is well, is I'm Patton sure one of the people you. who have been like, um, it was really difficult. Not difficult, but uh, intimidating to work on set with him? With Patton? Yeah. No, he doesn't. Um, I mean, the very first table read that we did of the show, um, and I was already a big fan of his, and you know, I sat down, and I was just so excited to, 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 to meet him because, again, I'm, I'm just a huge fan. And, yeah, I sat down with Patton, and, and I, I sat, and before I could even say anything to him, he was like, oh, my God. He's like, I, dude, I'm so happy to meet you. Like, he just came on so, like, super, so happy. And he's a big Sonny fan, and so... I don't know. We broke the ice really quickly. And I mean, he's just not, I don't know. He's not a, there's nothing intimidating about him. And what I mean by that is just, he's so down to earth. Like he, there's not, he, like he doesn't, there's no pretense there. And I'm the same way. I, I, I really don't like, 
you know, I get uncomfortable if somebody puts me on a pedestal. I, I really am uncomfortable with the idea of celebrity, with the idea of being put on a pedestal. Uh, you know, but to say it's like you want it both ways. You, know, you want the respect and you want yeah, people to love absolutely. your show. You're in a hotel it's, room. It's, it's kind of like put me on a pedestal, <laughs> but don't tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Dude, Thursdays, yeah. eight thirty on NBC. Yep. AP Bio. Check, Check it out. out. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man.